there, Tracy here with another scrapbooking process video. Today I used the December hip kit and I used the scrapbooking kit, I dipped into the project life kit and I also used the color kit. Today's layout is inspired by a sketch from Creative Sca Scrappers, <laughs> Creating with Sketches. Here's the book and it's found on page six if you're looking for the sketch that I used. Um, and here I go. I'm starting by having a look through my products that I have picked out to use in the month of January. So I have the, uh, I, I'm, what I'm pulling out of my basket here is my hip kit for December and um, it came right a little bit before Christmas but I haven't had a chance to use it very much. So I'm pulling out the paper that came with that kit. Actually, I don't think I used it at all. So this piece of paper with the silver dots all over it is really speaking to me as one of the, the options for the diagonal. And I'm just trying to decide, am I going to combine two pattern papers or am I just going to use this polka dotted silver paper with a white piece of cardstock? That silver polka dotted paper is from Dots and Stripes from Echo Park. It really is one of my favorite papers in this kit. So I'm going to go ahead and use that for my diagonal and I'm going to back it on a piece of plain white cardstock from my stash. I use American Crafts cardstock and I trimmed it a little off there. So I just had to go back and trim off that little sliver to make it, to make it trimmed properly. And now it doesn't fit diagonally into my trimmer. So I'm just going to fold it in half like this across the diagonal to make a diagonally uh, a diagonal line in that is scored and then I'm just going to hand cut it all the way across like that and it's easy to do that because of the print on it is perfectly diagonal so I just followed both the fold line and the row of polka dots that I was cutting through. Now I'm going to cut this triangle down a little bit on two sides because the sketch calls for and I do want to uh, copy this part of the sketch uh, it, the sketch calls for the diagonal triangle to be inset on the background paper. So that's, I just had to trim it down a little bit for that. Using my ATG to attach that piece of pattern paper to the background cardstock. And now I'm looking at some photos that I already have printed because I was having a bit of trouble with my picture mate charm. It's the print heads are just really globby and I'm having a hard time cleaning it. So I thought I would try to find a photo and I'm looking for a black and white photo for this. I, I think that it will work really well with this background. And so I went with this piece of, uh, it's a five by seven piece of watercolor paper that I ran through my Canon PIXMA one Pro 100 and uh, it prints okay onto watercolor paper. It, it gives you a bit of a fibrous uh, artsy look. And so I'm just going to cut it down a little bit and I ended up cutting it down to five so I didn't change the height of it by three and a half inches. So I cut off quite a bit from the width of it. And now I want to play around with one of these wooden carved stamps that I bought over the Christmas holidays for myself. And I really love this this print and I, I think that it will make a really nice background, a subtle background addition, but I haven't played around with this, this block yet. And my, I bought it for using with paint, but I thought I would, before I use it, just experiment a little bit. So I have another piece of American Crafts cardstock. I'm just stamping on the non textured side of that, which still has a, a little bit of texture. So I knew that a, a dye ink probably wouldn't leave a good impression. So I thought I'd try pigment ink. It didn't leave a great impression. It did better than what a dye ink probably would do. I didn't even try a dye ink. Those are Mama Elephant pigment inks. And the gray just really, it's very, very uh, faint. And it, I'm actually looking for a very faint uh, application here. So I am keeping that in the back of my mind as a potential uh, option for for stamping this on my background. And I'm getting a little bit messy. I'm pulling out some liquid media here. So I'm just grabbing my Tri Plus art palette, which has a piece of parchment paper attached to it with packing tape. And I thought I would try something a little bit more liquidy. So I have my Liquitex inks. I have white and I have thalocyanine green and I'm just uh, mixing them up in a little tray here, a little plastic palette and applying it with a brayer and then I'm braying over top of it and I'm trying both uh, stamping right onto the block, sorry about my head there, uh, stamping right onto the block 
and also like from the applying the block to the paper and I'm also trying applying the paper to the block and then running my brayer my clean brayer over top of it and then I added a little bit of white paint to make it a little bit stickier because that was just too liquidy and it wasn't sticking to the paper at all and I really like to look at that that's beautiful that's exactly the kind of subtle faint image that I was looking for so I'm going to go ahead and use that so it's a combination of Liquitex acrylic color which is a paint that comes in a tube and those colors come from the uh, Liquitex ink that was already on my palette so I really like how this is looking it's not stamping perfectly but that's okay I'm just going to keep stamping and stamping until I have enough random parts of this image to make it look like a, a fairly interesting background of course the more white paint I add the lighter and more faint the green is getting but that's okay and I, I just grabbed a piece of deli paper to pull some of the extra paint off of the block in between applications and that made a nice pattern on my deli paper which so I put that aside to use another time and I'm just kind of trying to move this block around I don't I want to concentrate most of the image in the center but I wanted a little bit in the top right hand corner and a little bit in the bottom left hand corner as well so this is how it turned out. I'm really pleased with it. It has that just nice little subtle bit of interest to go right alongside my photo and I think it will look nice just kind of disappearing in behind my photo and then those little bits on the top and on the bottom as well. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and with the, my leftover paint I'm just going to take pull a couple of prints from this almost using it uh, like I would a jelly plate. I'm just rolling paint onto it and then pressing my deli paper onto it and pulling the prints off and uh, that's another way to use these uh, wooden blocks and so now I have my my brayers all messy and I just uh, set out a baby wipe and roll 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 and roll a little bit on the edges to get the paint off of the edges of that as well and now that is a uh, a three inch brayer by Speedball that I was using to apply the paint and then a four inch brayer also by Speedball that I was using to as my clean brayer for ro rolling uh, to, to apply even pressure to the image to get a good a good stamp. So now I'm just uh, cleaning everything up and I leave these sorts of things in so that you can see my entire process and also so I can get caught up on narrating if I fall behind. Now this is uh, Heidi Swap sweet mint which uh, is a little bit of a creamier color of of mint than the uh, mint that I already had in my collection it came in the color add-on for the hip kit for the month of December and so I'm also going to so I've splattered some of that on there as you see I'm going to dry it before I add some shimmerings in the color of concrete that also came in the hip kit December color add-on and I just want to dry this so that the two colors when they're wet I don't want them to mix I want them to remain distinct I almost always either dry or wait for my mist splatters to dry before I add another color I'm being really really liberal with the use of these splatters I want it to look really messy and intense in the center especially in the center and I want uh, these mist splatters to really blend in with a little bit of the structure that I added with that pattern from the woodblock stamp so again I'm going to dry that up and try to clean up my space and my hands a little bit now I'm using Liquitex ink in carbon black and I'm just dropping a little bit on a toothbrush and then I'm flicking it and I'm going to change my camera angle so that you can see exactly how I do that as I do it the second time and I'm just using my thumb to direct the splatter and I get a very fine splatter when I do that and I like how the black looks mixed with that sweet mint and the gray from the uh, concrete shimmers so that is how that looks I really love the look of the toothbrush splatter it gives uh, quite a bit more and that that uh, ink is so pigmented that uh, it it it's pr gets pretty messy so that's why I use my triart plus uh, palette not triart plus but just triart palette so now I'm just flicking some more 
uh, larger droplets because you only get a very fine spray with the toothbrush. So I just used a paintbrush to add some la large splatters to that. And now I'm going to just clean up with a baby wipe. I use lots and lots of baby wipes because I don't have a sink nearby and I don't like running up and down the stairs too much uh, to tidy up in between the, the tasks that I do. So I'm just putting away my Triplus art palette and I'm going to go back to composing this. So here's what it looks like when it's all dry and pretty. I really love the contrast that those black larger splatters add. So I'm thinking about actually matting my photo in this scrap deli paper that I use just for pulling some extra prints off of the wooden block. And I'm just going to line them up so that they're not perfect. I'm taking a little bit off of one of the layers so that it's smaller than the other one. So you can see a couple of more edges. It gives it a little bit more texture. And I'm just turning it, turning those two layers so that you will see some of that green print pattern printed on the deli paper on the right hand side and on the bottom edge. And then the other two edges are, uh, are just plain. So I took the whole project over to my sewing machine and I am just using a straight stitch to stitch all the way around just the triangle piece of pattern paper here. I thought about going all the way around the whole project and also across the diagonal, but I decided to just put the stitching around the piece of pattern paper. It looks more intentional that way, like it's there for a reason, which is to hold the paper together. And uh, I'm also going to stitch all the way around the outside of this photo. And I just thought that this photo lent itself to stitching because the paper itself has such a fabric feel to it. That I mean the paper that the photo is printed on because it's printed onto watercolor paper and just the way the watercolor paper accepted the ink, it just has a, a very linty look to it. <laughs> Uh, so I thought that the uh, that the having the sewing on it would emphasize the textile looking nature of that photo. It almost looks like it's printed onto a piece of fabric, like a thick piece of fabric. And so now I'm just looking at these uh, letter stickers and the phrase stickers that came in the December hip kit, and these are from Wild, and they're thickers. They're called Wild. And I, because he's standing in a, in a field, this is a photo of my nephew, by the way, and he's standing in a field of wildflowers. So I noticed that one of the phrases was wild about you. And it's, my title is kind of made for me when you, <laughs> when, when you're dealing with embellishments and you have such a perfect phrase, there's no way that I could make my title be anything else. So I'm probably not going to use the thank you phrase in that set. So I'm going to use the T from the thank you to experiment with different ways that I could maybe color these foam letter stickers. I have painted foam letter stickers and I have inked them, but I wasn't sure if I could mist them or use this Liquitex liquid ink on it. Neither of those are really sinking into the foam or sticking to the foam very well, so I'm going to go back to my original idea, which was to ink these. Before I do it, I just want to check and make sure that the ink is going to hold the way that I remember it holding the last time I did this. So I just used that um, yellow because I want these letters to have a pop of color. And I thought maybe yellow, but once I saw it on the foam, I thought, no, I think that yellow is a little bit too bright. So I pulled out a turquoise and a reddish pink to use as options. It is a layout about a boy, but I'm not opposed to using pink on a boy layout. I use my heat gun just to see how much I'd need to let that dry before it stops transferring the colors. And it turns out I'm gonna have to let it dry for quite a while. So I'm not entirely sure which of those three colors I might use for my title. So I'm going to skip ahead to the embellishing phase and that will help me determine what color I wanna use. Now in the Project Life kit for from Hip Kit for December, there are these awesome, stars. I mean, they're amazing acrylic stars. They're just so gorgeous. I, there are also wood veneer arrows that I want to use, so I pulled those out. And once I saw those stars, there was a combination of mint green, gold, gray, and purple. So I decided I'll take my mama elephant 
ink and in the eggplant color which was one that I actually didn't have picked out already but I just went to my stash and got it and I thought I would ink the these words in that and so I covered the whole thing in all of those words in purple and then I just went back and added an extra coat along the very bottom to give myself a bit of an ombre look look and then I went back and put a third coat of that eggplant on the very, very tips of the bottom so that it has just a gradual look. And then I went went in with the ink pad itself and just smoothed it out so that I couldn't see any lines in, in, those, uh, in those words. And now I'm taking the Take Me Away embellishments from the ephemera pack they're just die cut cardstock pieces and uh, they also came in the december scrapbooking kit from hip kit club and uh, i'm going to put the smaller floral piece in the top and the larger one in the bottom corner because it just um, works better for anchoring to put the larger piece on the bottom and I'm just following the diagonal here. So the, that diagonal line that runs across my page is what's guiding me in placing the floral pieces there. And then I really like this banner, even though it does probably have a bit more pink in it than I like. I just, I like, I'm pulling out anything that has some, um, some purples in it. And I like this frame here, but it, it looks a little too boxy and I don't want to cover up the splatter there either. So I'm going to put that back into the embellishment set and keep looking for more pieces. And you see me, I'm thinking, oh, maybe I can use this Carpe Diem piece. It seems like a little much to use the Carpe Diem piece and the banner, but the more I look at it, the more I think it actually looks pretty cute layered like that. So I think I'm going to leave it. I'm introducing more gold here than I thought I would. I already have silver on the background, but these embellishment pieces, I just want to put something behind the Carpe Diem just to to give it a little bit of an anchor or a home to sit in. And so I have that that purple frame and I pulled out the, the green frame again, but it's just not going to work quite right. And then I thought, ah, oh, this yellow frame is going to work much better. It's a little bit uh, more contrast. The green frame was too blending in with the background paper and the purple frame by itself was blending in too much with the Carpe Diem because it has that large bit of purple right under the D-I-E of Carpe Diem. Now I wanted to fill in that yellow frame with something because it was distracting how the center of it didn't have anything in it and you could see through too many layers behind because the purple frame is also cut out. And so what I decided to do was just use one of the tags and it had a gold part on it. So I just cut that and stapled it to the yellow frame. And now I'm just auditioning various different pieces. And I thought I'm going to need a, a, a hit of that uh, darker pink up in the top secondary cluster. So I took that love you tag and I have a little bow there that's in the mint green. And I also have a wood veneer arrow, both under the carpe diem and also under the love ya. Now I'm cutting this down because it's this tag is a little bit too long when it said happy, happy, happy. So I just cut off the last happy so that it's it sits properly as a layer over top of my photo and it just balances nicely with the wildflower die cut that's underneath so these embellishments and this is uh this these are some phrases from the december project life kit and i also picked out that really beautiful striped purple and white project life card from the project life kit i just thought that that pattern was so bold and beautiful i'm going to use my my corner chopper chomper from memory we are memory keepers to uh, just soften the edges on that a little bit i rounded them off it makes them match a little bit better with the yellow frame that's behind that and then i'm pulling out that purple frame I had there and replacing it with this higher contrast a little bit more bold background piece instead of using that soft flowery uh, purple frame that I had there at the beginning so I thought I would at this point stick my photo onto the background and now I'm going to actually change my mind and pull that photo off and apply all of my layers to the photo first before I apply the photo to the background. And ATG is pretty forgiving for those sorts of things, especially with a foiled paper like this, like this polka dotted one. So I'm just putting these back on the photo uh, in the way that I had them picked out and set out ahead of time. 
And I'm trying to think about what kind of a string I'm going to put through that happy, happy die cut piece at the top. And I, I thought about some linen thread and then I thought about some white string. And now finally I'm settling on this piece of, of a ribbon from Stampin' Up. It's very thin ribbon. It's, it's in the color Smoky Slate. And I think it's, I forget the, the size of it, but it's a very thin ribbon. So, uh, so yeah, now I'm just going to glue these pieces down. I'm going to pop up the Carpe Diem piece because it is the main embellishment for this, for this page. And I want it to be separated out a little bit from the banner. I'm going to just leave the banner as it is. I thought about modifying the banner so that I covered up that hot pink square with a, with a green square, but I decided to leave it because I'm putting hot pink up in the other secondary cluster. Anyhow, I used my Tombow Mono multi-adhesive to glue that wood veneer arrow right below the diem. And now I'm just going to stick that piece right in place. I'm really liking how this is looking. It's more embellished than I was planning. I, I was planning to have it not be this embellished at all, but I just keep adding and adding and I really like it. So I just keep going and going until I run out of things to put on. I'm just going to shift that over a little tiny bit. I want that black splatter, that black cluster of splatters to be showing because I really like the contrast that that adds to the page. And now I'm just going to layer these pieces up here to allow me to just put a little caption for my photo. And I'm actually going to layer them, like I'm going to adhere them each to one another before I put the whole thing on the, on the page. I did use my corner chomper to round the corners of, my, of that uh, other piece of the diagonally striped paper. And now I'll add the mint bow from the ephemera pack and the love you tag from the ephemera pack and just kind of have them all over to the side. And that's going to give me a little bit of, of room right above the mint green bow to write Jude comma one year. And then I'll put 2016 down there as well. And now I am, oh yes, I headed over to my sewing machine and I forgot to turn on my camera. So I'll just let you use your imagination about that part. <laughs> I cut the, the threads off just one side of this because there are some threads hanging down below. So I wanted it to match. And I like the extra texture that those hanging threads add to this project, especially with the splatters all over it. It just, I think that the, th the hanging threads look especially nice on a mixed media page. So I just ran two uh, straight stitches, two lines of straight stitches over top of the bow. And then I just used my Tombow Mono Multi to glue that arrow in place. And now what I'm doing is I'm going over to my Tri Plus Art palette that is uh, holding my title. And I just had to check it and make sure that it was dry already. It was, it's been, you know, a good half hour since I inked it, but it is still transferring a little bit when I touch it with my fingers. So I just took my heat gun to it and you'll notice that it has absorbed some of that ink and the entire title is a little bit lighter than it was a few minutes ago when I made it. I'm just dabbing it with a paper towel to try to get any extra ink off of it and then hitting it with the heat gun again. I'm going to transfer the whole title onto a piece of clean waxed paper, which will result in less mess ups if when I when I try to decide where I'm going to place this using a baby wipe to just clean up my palette and then I'll put the whole thing away and just again I'm just dabbing it and blotting it with this piece of paper towel just to get all of the extra ink off of that so I really love how that title turned out I like the the ombre effect on it and I really love the color as well. I don't use purple a whole lot but uh, I find that the Paige Evans Take Me Away collection gives a nice opportunity. I like to spread out my title a little bit when it uses this brush script 
just uh, to make it seem a little bit more natural. I think that if you were writing this out with a paintbrush uh, or a marker, you would space it out. So I want it to look, you know, more natural, I guess. So I started with about because that's the longest word. And then I placed wild and you based on uh, b kind of the A senders and D senders on the, on the other words, but also based on how it lines up with other elements on the page. And now I'm taking those really gorgeous acrylic pieces uh, that are those stars from the Hip Kit uh, Project Life Kit from December. And I'm just sprinkling them. I just left them in the envelope and tapped the envelope so that they fell all over the page. And for the most part, you see me moving a few of them around here. There were a lot of them in that in that envelope, so I'm going to remove some of them. But for the most part, I'm leaving them exactly where they fell. And so I want to make it so that the stars are landing in places where the mist would have landed. So I pulled some of them off when they landed in other places. I'm using my Tombow Mono Multi Adhesive to glue these down. And for the most part, I'm just tapping a little dab of the glue onto the paper and then placing the star back in place on top of it. Uh, and that works well for all of the solid stars, but then for the outline stars, I have to pick them up in my hand and just outline around them. And some of those stars landed upside down, and that's okay. That, that means that some of them have a shiny finish to them, and some of them have a more of a, um, what is it, like a frosted finish. And those two gray ones landed beside each other, so I just left them like that. Again, that looks a little bit more natural when things aren't always all perfectly spread out and, and variable. And this is about how the page looks. There is one loose star on there that I didn't know about, so when I start showing it to you, I'm going to notice it. Look at how that little cluster looks. I love how the mist from the toothbrush just splatters all over the place, and it, it sort of connects my clusters of mist to one another. So instead of having three distinct clusters of mist, it spreads it in a diagonal line it, opposite to the diagonal line that uh, runs across the page. And so you see that star right above the banner there? It's going to slip off in a second. There you go. That's when I notice it. <laughs> and so I'm going to think about where I want to put it. I don't necessarily want... It do, It seems like this layout is pretty okay without it. But I also don't necessarily want to keep a single purple star because my chances of using it are pretty slim. The uh, other ones that I kept from this page were four gold stars, which are much easier to use than a purple star. So I'm going to find a home for this on the page. And I thought that it might actually make a nice uh, accent to the main embellishment on this page, which is that Carpe Diem. Uh, die cut that has the wood veneer on it. So I'm exp I'm auditioning it in a few different places around the page be and I thought about just not using it and then I thought ah wait a minute I'll put it right here under the P and E in the word carpe. I thought about putting it on the banner over there but that's just going to distract you. I want to draw your attention to the carpe diem so I'll put the star right there. And then I'll speed you up again so you don't have to watch me painstakingly glue that down. There we go with the Tombow Mono Multi-Adhesive and here is the close-up. I really love this layout. It's one of my favorites in recent times. I especially love the title. I don't use that script font very often but I really like it in this case. And uh, with that picture of him in the wildflowers, you just can't resist. If you're interested in seeing how I did that photo with the with the splots on it uh, in the watercolor paper, I just flicked some water paper with some water droplets onto it after it had dried, and that is in my video where I talk about comparing the Canon Pixma Pro 100 to the Epson Picture Mate Charm, and so that I think is the video right before this one on my channel, or you can just search it. I'll try to remember to link it in the information section for this one. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys all have a really great scrappy week.